The following is a paid program by Zola Levitt Ministries. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. There is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Zola Lepp presents with Dr. Jeffrey Seif. Hearty shalom to all of you. Jeffrey Seif here, pleased to welcome you again to a special edition of Zola Levitt Presents. Normally, I do that hearty shalom to you stuff in our studio in Dallas, but I'm sure you'll forgive me this time as I'm coming to you from the Mount of Olives, and oh, what a vista behind me. And I know it's inspired you, save the fact you could probably do without that dome of the rock. And like me, you may be looking for the day when the temple is built there. Well, that day's coming. I want to remind you of a verse in scripture, Zechariah. Zechariah spoke of a day when not only is this land restored and Jehovah worship in it, but he says that people from the nations round about will come and worship the Lord here at the Feast of Tabernacles. I come here all the time, and I want to tell you that sometimes I feel very alone in what I do, and why is that? Because like Jews the world over, we feel like the world's against us, and there's good reasons why we feel that way. However, truth be known, there are people like you, and you're going to see some of you in what's coming up next. We like to poke our cameras around here in Israel and show the good, the bad, and the ugly. And this is the good. I want to begin this year-end program by reflecting some of the year and taking you on a journey where we've been. One of the places we took you to a story where thousands of Christians were coming to show their support for Israel with the International Christian Embassy, a massive march that lights the candles of Jews all over Israel. Come with me and let's look at this wonderful march here at the Feast of Tabernacles. And then what is your feeling as an Israeli to see not only the Israelis, I'm but proud. all these people? I'm so from... proud to see what everybody does for us on this parade and Beside that, uh, to see how many people like Jerusalem and uh, appreciate what Jerusalem does for us. Yes, I know a Jude. He's my best friend. He was born in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. His name is Yeshua Hamashiach. He's living deep in my heart. I love you, Jewish people, the nation of Israel. It's a biblical mandate. To be blessed by God, we need to bless Israel. As Israelis, what is what is your feeling seeing so many international I'm people? I'm very here? happy. It's very pleasure for me to see all this and all the tourists that come here. It's something uh, impossible. <laughs> Is it surprising that so many Christians uh, uh, support Israel as they do? Actually, it is. Yeah. It is, a little. Yes. We always heard about all, all the people that are against us and to see so many people that really love us and really, it's really touching. <laughs> it just makes you very happy and proud to be a Jew and proud to be in Yerushalayim and to be proud to be sharing all of this Sukkot, the parade, <laughs> everything. Thanks to God, we can celebrate this way. It's our second time here yeah. in Israel, and, and we're really excited. It's amazing. I think it's amazing to see the nations coming to support Israel. It's happening. It's a prophecy, and I think it's amazing. It's a, how God is bringing all the nations together to Israel. It's very, very moving to see so many uh, non-Jews who uh, obviously love us and uh, it's very very moving and uh, it's 
It's a sign that, uh, that we're in the right direction. How's that for some wonderful footage and great testimonies? I thank God for it all. People come from all over the world and say, Israel, we're behind you. I met one such person here who wasn't from all over the world, who was from this part of the world. Rosemary Schindler, uh, related by marriage into the Oscar Schindler family, told me, Jeff, you need to meet Nahum Curry, a Baptist pastor of Arab extract in Bethlehem. What's interesting about Nahum isn't simply that he stands for Jesus in an Islamic world under the jurisdiction of the Palestinian Authority, but in conjunction with standing for Jesus, he stands with the Jewish people, if you can imagine that. Some people say, well, this television program is all about the Jews. No, it's principally about Jewish concerns, true, but I'm all about wanting to put spotlights on worthy people, and this Arab brother in the Lord is worthy people. We spent a lot of time with him this year and had a program centered around him. Let's hear from him now, Dr. Nahum Curry, Arab Christian pastor of Bethlehem Baptist Church. We're, we're here at the church now, your church in Bethlehem, and your home is on the property of the facility. Uh, you're coming home one evening, or what happens when you get shot, if I can ask? Yes, uh, as, I, as I said before, believing in the covenant of God with Abraham, you make a lot of enemies right. among the uh, traditional churches, like the Palestinians, the Arabs, because they do believe in the replacement theology. In other words, Israel, uh, church replaced Israel, uh, God has finished uh, with Israel and all of that, but that's not true. God has not finished with, his, with Israel yet. And uh, the result of that, uh, they did not like for me to teach the whole truth about the Bible and the covenant. In other words... So you're telling that story here in your church, yes. and word is getting out, and yes. people are coming and talking to you saying, you need to get rid of that message, and you said no. No, I cannot, because I believe in the whole Bible. I believe in the Old and New Testament as inspired, uh, infallible Word of God. It's the covenant of God. And God said to me, he said, if you need to be blessed, you need to explain and share the full covenant that the promises of God with Abraham, it's an everlasting covenant forever and ever and ever, and no one can replace it or change it. The result of that, I start to face difficulties and problems here in Bethlehem. This church was bombed 14 times. 14 times. times. And uh, four years ago, I was shot four bullets. One hit my left shoulder here and a uh, lot of threaten, a lot of difficulties, but uh, I believe from all my heart that my time is not to go yet. I need to keep the message, well, preach the message. I guess it's not your time yet because you're still here and you're still preaching Amen. and teaching. Now, on the way here, uh, our producer, Ken Berg, told me, he says, there's someone that you need to meet. This is, uh, they said, he said, Jeffrey, you, you need to meet Pastor Curry because you came so highly recommended, I can understand why now that I'm hearing your story. Persecuted for your faith in Jesus, given for dead for wanting to stand with Jewish people in a church that was bombed 14 times. Yes, sir. Um, it's honor for me to serve my Savior because he's a living Savior. It's an honor for me to be in your presence, to tell you the truth. Thank you. You are most welcome uh, here. And we just thank God for what he's doing here. We've seen miracle after miracle took place in our church, almost 48 miracles the last two or three years. I mean, serious miracles. You talk about cancer being healed. You talk about multicirrhosis being healed. You talk about heart disease being healed. You talk about a lot of rheumatism uh, being healed one after one, and the most awesome ministry we've seen the last five years, Brother Jeff, is the deliverance ministry. The deliverance ministry has been awesome ministry 
seeing lot of people being delivered by from demonic spirits and they're getting saved they're getting baptized they join the church and they some of them sing in the choir today praising the lord jesus christ so it seems that uh, as the, the devil tries to assault you that god is just taking you from glory to glory and your ministry amen because the devil never ever was victorious any time he has been defeated and he is been defeated by the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we have victory in Jesus. We have to keep our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ, serving him faithfully. When we are faithful to him, he will stay faithful to us. Dr. Curry fascinates me just when I think of him, the way he's absorbed punishment for the sake of the gospel. Which reminds me, ever watch NFL football and note how toward the end of the season, you can see some of these players with casts in their arms. They're, they're bruised and battered, but they're still in the game. It's relentless to play in the NFL because it's punishing. And I want you to know what you probably already know, that is it's a tough season to be engaged in a ministry as such as ours because we're just coming out of troubled times and it's hard to find a dollar, but we're pressing on difficulties notwithstanding and the Lord graced us because he touched people's hearts to give us just enough to get by. And one of the things that we did this year by the grace of God was for us it really is, in effect, the equivalent of an epic motion picture. If you figure a normal movie's 90 minutes, we do an eight-part series. Uh, you figure 30 minutes of program, you do the math, there's a couple hours of TV there with the actors and the dramas. And we did a story that I'm in love with for a variety of reasons on Esther. And it was subtitled, For Such a Time as This. What a popular story, by the way. It reminds me of how God raises people up to lend a helping hand. They come out of nowhere. I've seen friends come out of nowhere to help us and keep on coming, please. I see it in the Bible. I see it in the world today. Esther's a beautiful woman inside and out. God positioned her and she used her influence to turn bad into good. Let's see some highlights from that right now. It all happened in the days of King Ahasuerus, also called Xerxes. Having overthrown the Babylonian Empire, he ruled over 127 provinces from India to Ethiopia, and the king ruled from his magnificent palace in Shushan. In the third year of his reign, the king made a feast for all his princes and servants wherein he displayed the wealth of his royal glory and the majesty of his greatness. All were amazed at the great wealth except for one, who refused to attend. Queen Vashti would hold her own feast, sending a message to the king that she would not attend his feast. The king's rage would shake the very empire. 
and his trusted advisors were swift to bring judgment. יתרה מזאת, המלכה ושתי לא תופיע עוד לפני המלך, ורכושה המלכותי יוענק לאחרת, טובה ממנה. הודיעו בכל רחבי הממלכה שהמלכה ושתי מגורשת מיום זה ואילך לעולמי עד. An insult led to a divorce that a king would come to regret, and the divorce would lead to a marriage that the world would never forget. And this, friends, is the basis for the opening of a drama, a fascinating drama known in the Hebrew Bible as the Book of Esther. While King Xerxes garnered favor with most of his subjects, there were those who would usurp the throne. While sitting at the king's gate, Mordecai overhears a disturbing conversation. He meets with Esther and informs her of a wicked plot. <laughs> Contrary to the popular mythology, Jews are a good, just, equitable people. Oh, to be sure, we have our scoundrels, but these prove to be the exception and not the rule. Haman has found his just reward. His wicked schemes have left him hanging from atop the very gallows he had prepared for Mordecai. But from within the walls of the magnificent palace in Shushan, Queen Esther remains heartbroken. She appeals to the king on behalf of her fellow Jews. נתתי לך את בית המן, עכשיו חוקקי חוק. כתבי למען היהודים כרצונך, וכתמי את החוק בטבעת אשר נתתי למרדכי. She wanted to be a help. She wanted to save her people. And so she arranges uh, to visit her husband again and petition on their behalf that Jews be allowed to make a spirited defense given the fact that a decree was enacted for their destruction. Shemi 
Beautiful song, yes. Beautiful young lady. Kind of gives you a window into the heart and soul of Jewish experience here in Israel. She sang Psalm 121, and with me, I'm sure you know, I'll lift up my eyes to the Lord from whence does my help come. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And if you've been walking with the Lord for any season of time, then you know full well how that's the case, how help comes in various ways on various days from various people, all from the Lord, however. Over here in Israel, we need a lot of help, and you know what, we need a lot of God, and God shows up. God's interest in this land, his commitment to it, is evidenced in the Bible from cover to cover, and we wanted to show it in no uncertain terms, and so we have invested an inordinate amount of energy financial and people resources to bring this new series, Eretz Yisrael, on the land of Israel. If anyone doesn't know that God has given this land to a particular people, you're going to know it when you see it. Speaking of which, now you'll see a portent of things to come in our upcoming series, Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel. Pushed against the wall, people do tend to turn their hearts upward. The promise given of a great nation, Avraham then departs and he makes his way to the land of Canaan, the land then called Canaan. Open your Bibles, please, to Genesis chapter 12, and let's follow in the footsteps of our father Abraham. We're told in verse 5. In 1909, Jews gathered in these sand dunes to plan a new town that would become the urban center of Israel, Tel Aviv. Today, over a million people living in it. We're going to make our way as we walk in the footsteps of Moses en route to the promised land. With your help, let me tell you what's cooking in the Zola Lovett Ministries kitchen. We so much love telling the story of Esther. We want now to alight upon another woman. Oh, there are great women in the Bible, movers and shakers, one of whom is a woman named Ruth. Uh, from Moab, a Jordanian woman, an Arab woman who joined herself to the people of Israel. She is so commendable in so many ways with her virtue. To be without virtue is said to be, quote, ruthless. Isn't that something? The way the language, the English language, harks back to biblical moorings. We want to explore this fascinating story of this lovely woman. There are a number of things that are particularly fascinating about her, one of which is, at least the way I reckon, in the first chapter, she says in verse 16 at the end, relative to the Jewish people, this Arab woman says, your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Now there's beauty in that, to see that resolve, that commitment to join herself to the people of Israel. She was rolling the dice against an uncertain future. She had friends and kinfolk in Moab, 
but she opted to leave her Arab relational network to join herself to the people of Israel. What commitment. If you'll permit, I'd like to talk to you about that joining and that commitment. If I ask you for money, I hope you won't be too offended to help us make this program and others like it. It's not actually a program, it's a series, something akin to a motion picture. The reason why I don't feel bad for asking is because if you follow this ministry, you know that we never ask for a dime. In part, you know, Jews have a reputation. They're always after the money. That's fantasy, by the way. That's not true. But it's an abiding prejudice in the world, and we're sensitive to it. We try and be discreet and not spend any time. But we usually take the time at the end of the year to say, hey, will you help us for the coming year to make good TV, TV worth watching? Some telethons go on for hours and hours, but our appeal goes on for minutes and minutes. And we're here at the tail end of the program and at the tail end of the year. Let me ask you, please, if you will, to prayerfully consider standing with us. Whether it's a dime or a dollar, whatever it might be, I don't know. But I do know that we need some help. Uh, Zola Levitt Ministries, like many ministries, is crawling out of the ravages of a really tough economy. And we've been pressing on difficulties notwithstanding. And the Lord is enabled with friends coming alongside of us. Can I ask you please to be gracious and consider prayerfully coming alongside of us right now? Whatever it might be, a dime or a dollar, a hundred or a thousand, whatever, it really helps us get on down the road. We don't fly in private jets. In fact, we fly coach on the way over here to get to the land because we're not looking to spend money on executive perks. We're looking to spend money on telling a Bible story from a very, very, very unique perspective. And we need your help to do it. So again, I hope you won't think the, the less of me for asking. I want you to know there's a blessing in it for you if Genesis is to, believed, uh, to be believed. And the reason why I say that is God says, I will bless those who bless them and curse those who curse them. I don't know what you're looking for in the coming year, but if you're looking to get God's help in the process, attend to God's business. Because he has a way of, if we're serving him, there's a way that it comes back to us 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. You'll see an address coming up soon. Please send the best donation you can to help us bring God's word to a thirsty world that's starving for it. And as you go now, Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Please pray for the peace of Jerusalem. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.